So maybe this laptop should be illegal in California. Today's video is sponsored by DataCamp, the online platform making it easy to build data skills. Acquire skills faster with over 350 courses and interactive learning experiences. Curated courses include many popular sciences like SQL, Python, and machine learning, and provide easy to follow tracks so you can learn at your own pace. Combine video classes with practical exercises and skills assessments. Take a free assessment and receive personalized learning recommendations to get you started on your learning adventure. So start investing in yourself by using my link in the description below and check out the first chapter of any course for free. All right, so today we're taking a look at the Eon 17-X from Origin PC. Uh, this is, to be fair, a desktop replacement. We've talked about this in the past. This isn't the first time we've looked at the Eon 17. Um, it's actually, I believe, the second time, possibly even the third. Um, the previous one obviously came out a few generations ago. It was a big, crazy laptop. Uh, but this guy is an Intel 11900K overclockable desktop processor. It is a full desktop processor inside of this replacement PC. Now, we've seen that already before. Uh, with AMD CPUs, but now we're seeing it with Intel's. And as you can see, the only way you can supply enough power to a unit like this is to have two power bricks on here. And in fact, I can't remember what the wattage is on these. Oh yeah, two 280 watts. So that's 400, no, 560 watts of power <laughs> coming out of these two bricks. They even give you a nice little holder though for it to keep them together. Um, but anyway, we're running off battery power at the moment and uh, because I was kind of curious as to what the battery life is going to be. Obviously, we'll talk about that in a second. This is just a, a cheat sheet that shows you what all the function keys are on the keyboard. That way you're not having to rely on just the little symbols. You can kind of get acquainted with it. One thing I want to point out, there is a mistake on here. It says F1 brings up the fan control. That's not true. F1 brings up the uh, locking and unlocking of the, of the uh, touchpad. So that's not that's, that's wrong, they should fix that. It tells you what the ports on the side are, and then it does have a fingerprint reader on here. So, biometrics built into your system. I, that's nothing new, but anyway, here it is. This is, like I said, a full desktop replacement. It's essentially crammed a full-size desktop into this, like, 10-pound. It is extremely heavy. This is not gonna be exactly your most travel-friendly system unless you need the power of a desktop in the portability of a laptop. Obviously with the 11900K, it's very fast versus any sort of H SKU that you would typically find from Intel inside a laptop. In fact, right now, even on battery power, it is currently sitting at three gigahertz, 2.65, 2.61, uh, eight cores, 16 threads. It's, it's no slouch. Now memory, we've got 32 gigabytes of 24 megahertz or 2400 megahertz SODIMM in here. It is upgradable to 64 gigabytes and you can obviously spec the Eon 17X in a bunch of different versions. Uh, that way you're able to kind of get it to meet your needs. I have two NVMe SSDs in here, two one terabyte NVMe SSDs. So there I have my system drive, important files and stuff on there. And then I've obviously got a secondary drive which has like games and stuff with our Steam. Although one NVMe would be perfectly capable, obviously, of running an OS in your games by having them separate the way I like to do it. It gives you a little bit snappier response when you're doing things that are also not requiring the OS to be constantly pinged on the same drive you're gaming on. It seems to help with like quick stutters when it does like a page file swap or it's grabbing textures or something. It can do it on a separate drive, which gives you a lot smoother experience when it comes to games. This thing is an absolute monster. In terms of graphics, it has obviously, as you would expect, a RTX 3080 uh, mobile edition. In fact, it is the uh, it's what they call the laptop GPU. Remember, there are different specs now in terms of laptop GPU, but this is uh, our laptop GPU is Max P, Max Q laptop. They keep kind of changing the name, but regardless, that's what it is. It is an RTX 3080, which is currently the highest spec that you can get when it comes to laptops. It is a G-Sync panel. The panels do come in different uh, flavors. This particular one, in the 17 inch format, I personally do not like 4K panels. I also do not like glossy panels. I want an IPS high refresh rate 1080p because 1080p at 17 inches is perfectly fine. You've really got to get up close to the damn thing to find pixels. But I want an anti-glare IPS high refresh rate. And guess what? That's what we've got. But we have a 300 hertz version of it. So with the 11900K, the laptop RTX 3080 and this panel, means that if you're gonna play anything that requires any sort of Twitch response, like a, like a shooter, any sort of esports type title where FPS matters, this is going to give it to you. Give me a 300 hertz 1080p panel over a 4K60 any day of the year when it comes to a laptop. Even a 4K 
120 panel would be useless because you're not gonna get 120 frames per second at 4K with a laptop 3080, regardless if it's overclocked or not. In terms of connectivity and stuff, I mean, it's pretty standard. On your right-hand side, you've got two Thunderbolts. Remember, this is Intel, and you weren't seeing those Thunderbolt ports on the other full desktop Ryzen CPUs because again, Th Thunderbolt is an Intel, an Intel technology, so you've got that. You've got a USB 3.0 uh, Type B, obviously. On the back, you've got too many display ports, another USB Type C, full size Ethernet port, two power plugs for obvious reasons. And then on the other side, you've got a full size SD card reader, which would be nice if you were using this as a mobile rendering station, like say CES or something like that. So you can offload straight from your camcorders or your cameras that use uh, SD card, put it right into your system. Two more USB 3.0, and then obviously your headphone and your microphone jack. Speakers are downfire on the front. For something this thick, there would be no excuse for the audio to be terrible. The good news is it's not. It's actually pretty loud and it's fairly full given the size that it, you know, we have to work with in here. In terms of battery, it's got the biggest battery that you can fit in a laptop, which is 99 watt hours, because that is as big of a battery as you're allowed to take on an airplane. If it wasn't for the fact that people with laptops tend to travel more often than not, uh, I'm sure they would have put a bigger battery than that in there by now. But 99 watt hours is as big as you can get, and that is what we've got in here. In terms of battery life though, please don't expect any miracles. This is a full size 11900K with a 3080. We have had this laptop on battery power now for probably 20 minutes. We're down to 81% and it's been sitting here idle. It's saying that we're gonna have about an hour and 51 minutes left of battery life based on its current usage, which is once again, idle. So this is referred to as a desktop replacement because in terms of battery life, as soon as you start doing anything on this, because the 11900K is gonna to wanna to go as high as it can go, obviously on battery power, it's gonna be limited. It's not gonna boost up like if it were seeing AC power like we have here with the two power bricks, the four or 560 watts worth of power bricks. Um, as soon as we plug it in, that performance goes through the roof. So let's talk about audio. Audio is the thing that usually, for me, makes or breaks how good the laptop is. I, I understand with ultra slim laptops, getting good audio is difficult because of the fact that you have very little depth to work with in terms of creating any sort of a, a, a proper speaker sound chamber in there. With how thick this laptop is, there's no reason whatsoever it should be terrible. Um, in fact, the downfire speakers on the front bounce at a 45 degree angle off the table or the surface back at you, and there is actually a small subwoofer underneath. So volume and clarity is something I expect to be good with this laptop. In fact, we'll, we'll cup, try a couple different genres of music here. They're all royalty free, so hopefully they don't hit us on the, on the monetization front. However, now keep in mind, you are gonna be listening to it through my lav mic at the distance that my head obviously is from the system right now, which is about, I don't know, probably two feet or maybe, I don't know, two thirds of a meter. Is that how Europeans do it? Something like that. <laughs> it's that far away, okay? So. The sound stage is super wide because it's bouncing. And I think they're bouncing at a slight angle. I think they're angled in there slightly. So this is kind of like a 80s electro electronic kind of a sound. Or maybe 90s, it sounds very 90s. 1991 is my guess. So it's very clear, obviously. Um, let's try some background music, happy. Do you hear that? It's like a rattly sound. It happens with certain low frequencies. We figured out what that is. We'll talk about it in a second. You can hear that, right? In terms of clarity and of the audio, it's really, really good. Um, what about dialogue? Let's go ahead and just go to one of my own videos here. Let's see what we got. All right, so I'm reading you a video right now that on the surface might seem a little late or a little delayed. However, the situation is not really resolving itself or getting any better, so I figured it's one of those things that will... It's loud enough to where it's actually reverbing out here in our warehouse. However, that rattly sound we talked about there, <clears throat> we actually, I actually pinpointed using a frequency generator where it's at. Listen. Do you hear that? The rattle sound is actually coming from the buttons on the trackpad. The speakers and the subwoofer are right under that. And one of my biggest complaints with this laptop slash desktop PC so far has been the mushiness of the buttons on the trackpad. They're not very solid. 
Those are literally vibrating on top of their stabilizers when you play music. And, and here's the thing, well Jay, you have it cranked up. Obviously it should be able to be clear cranked. Second, if I play it even at 50% volume, it does the same thing. In terms of recreating sound, we can hear something at 80 hertz. 70 hertz is a slight vibration on the table, there's no sound. 100 hertz has no problems recreating that. Again, there's a small subwoofer in here. That's also 22% volume with that rattle, by the way. Here, oh, it's rattling bad at 256. There's your perfect example, because it's such a high pitch vibration right there. Look, it's clear. Now listen when I move my fingers off the buttons. It sounds like a shaver. So, some of the best speakers I have heard in a laptop yet, ruined by the trackpad that's mounted above them. Let's go and talk about performance. So let's get around here, let's uh, play some games, let's do some rendering, let's do some Cinebench. You guys can kind of compare this to your desktop PCs to see just how powerful this absolute monster is. So we're gonna kick things off here with some Cinebench R20. We can compare this to our full-size desktop build that we've used for the 1100K review. Um, over here we have MSA Afterburner open because it does give us better monitoring of the core clocks and the temperatures than the built-in software because it pulls at a faster rate. But anyway, with this uh, said, let's, well, we don't even need to bring, open up the, uh, the control panel performance tabs because uh, we can see we have all our stuff right here. 2.7, that's pretty standard for idle. And as soon as we go to load, that will jump up to over 4. Point. We're looking for about 4.3, 4.4 all core, which is gonna be a little lower than you would see on the desktop, but obviously that's because of the thermal solution we have on a laptop like this. That's gonna be your biggest concern for anything regarding performance is the, the actual cooling system built into this, and we'll take a look at it before this is over. And we might try this in a couple of different configs, flat on the table and then lift it up in the back to get better airflow to the intake vents which are on the bottom and then the exhaust out the sides and out the rear. So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, see what our core clocks and stuff are as we start this test. Uh, it looks like 4.705 is what we're getting all core, which is exactly what we would expect to see on a desktop. And we just dropped to 4.6 and 4.5 for a second. Temperatures are in the high 90s, 98, 97. This is absolutely the type of behavior I would expect to see on a laptop this size. The fans just now kicked the full speed, so they're a little delayed. It's gonna be near 100C, there's no doubt about it. Um, we've seen this in the past with Intel CPUs in laptops like this. It's just the fact that they are trying to go as close to full speed on the desktop as they can with a very low profile, small fan heat pipe system. So I know a lot of people are gonna be like, that's way too hot. Believe it or not, that's exactly within spec. So it's up to you on whether or not you think that that's too hot or not. The engineers uh, say that 105 is the max temp and it's rated lifespan is based at 105. So we're still technically under that. So we just scored a 5,561. I wanna run that again to see how much that drops. So 5,561. Now that we're a little warmer, I'm curious as to whether or not we're gonna lose any, any score there. Remember Cinebench R20 is a very high uh, calculation type software that is basically pushing the CPU itself as far as it possibly can by handling all the ray tracing and all of this. This is essentially a ray tracing demo right here, which is where the CPU is doing all the math calculations to draw this image. I know people look at this and go, why is it so hard to draw a picture? That's because it's drawing this picture based off math, not pixel placement. So that's why this is so difficult for the CPU to run. But we haven't hit 100. We're sitting right around 98 to 97, 96 sometimes. It's really steady. 4.5 all core, 4.4, that's where it's fluctuating. 4.4, 4.5 all core. And that was the exact same score a second time. 55.61 to the point. We'll do some synthetics here. We'll do benchmark or 3D mark because that's something you guys can compare to. This isn't the first time we've tested an RTX 3080 laptop edition CPU, but this is our first time testing it with a full size desktop CPU and a desktop replacement laptop. Uh, the RTX 3080 laptop lands usually somewhere around a 3060 Ti to a 3070 graphics card comparison with a desktop. Okay, so maximum temperature we saw, so our score is a 7616. Our max temperature was 60 C. It's funny because that's a lot cooler than I was expecting it to be. GPU usage 99, our core clock was uh, over 1700 the entire time. It's actually really good. That lands right in between, like I said, a 3060 Ti desktop and a 3070 desktop. So it, technically the 3080 laptop is like a 3060 Ti super. 
or 3060 Super Ti. So here we are in Cyberpunk uh, 2077. We haven't played this in a while, so obviously this is what with all the updates. We've currently got 75 FPS at 1080p. Uh, our CPU is at 3.5, 66C, and our GPU is at 58C at 1725 megahertz. What we're looking for now is any sort of crazy FPS swings. So I know people might be watching this right now going, 70 FPS is not all that amazing. I mean, it's only 1080p. Well, what if I told you, don't crash. It's 1080p, ray tracing ultra. I mean, that was unexpected. In terms of DLSS, it's set to auto. So if we go to say quality, we don't know what it was defaulting to. I'm gonna say it was on quality based on the FPS I'm seeing. There's someone still alive around here. Dude, this is so smooth. Oh, hey. <laughs> the chunkiness. <laughs> Point blank. Stick. I forgot how fun this game was to just run around and like do this. I'll take that. Okay, well hey, I was all concerned about me ending up in this area. It worked out fine. Psycho. I don't know what what does happen on Psycho. I'm gonna reload right now I can. This is in this is so incredibly good. I I I know a lot of my audience is like, I don't care about any of that ray tracing stuff. I just want all the frames. So if we go ahead and turn off ray tracing. And this is DLSS on. Dude, 100 FPS right now. And the lighting still looks great. Like I know a lot of people are like, I don't even see a difference. Until you do it side by side, it's kind of hard to notice. What are all these guys doing over here? It's hard to notice the difference, but I mean, to be honest, I could totally play like this too. Oh, Aww. I like how that did less damage than shooting him by smashing him between the car. All right, so Cyberpunk obviously was absolutely no problem for this system to run. Now we're gonna go to another title that's just got a lot of prettiness to it. Not so much the hardest title to run, but fun nonetheless. All right, so Squadrons is a title that I've not played a whole lot and the controllers are really awkward to me, so. Still 300 FPS. I know. Shoot the engines. Whoa! That was close. <laughs> oh my, my, my shields are down. There you go. Let's get away. And my shield's bumped up for a second. Oh, I think I'm gonna die. I'm all smoky. R2! Let's kill him. Let's kill him. 300 FPS is definitely making me superior. Yay. 300 FPS the whole time. Ah! <laughs> okay, so this is all of the gaming that we've just done with Cyberpunk and uh, Squadrons. The hottest we ever saw was 63 degrees on the GPU. And this is all the temps right here. So this is 58, 57. This was all right here in Cyberpunk. It was locked at 58, 57. That's when we changed settings right there. But in Squadrons, it actually got hotter because it was much higher FPS, obviously, which is more load on the on the GPU, but locked with V-Sync to 300 hertz because that's what the panel is. But look at this while we were in space, 55, 54, 55. That was when it was loading the new scene, 54, 55, 58. So it's like really cool. All right, let's go ahead and look inside the laptop now that we've gone ahead and taken a look at uh, what the performance is like. Here is your battery right here. Removable and replaceable. So if the battery starts to lose some battery life over time, you can actually change it. So once you have all the screws out, it actually just slides up like so. And it lifts off. So that's probably already the easiest laptop we've ever gotten to the inside of. Holy cow, look at that heat pipe system. <laughs> 
Okay, so a few things you need to obviously be very mindful of. Here's the LED that goes along right here. Here's the LED ribbon cable. This would need to be removed very gently using a proper tool to lift up the ribbon cable. We won't be doing that right now. Here is our DDR4, which as you can see, standard SODIMM, not socketed. So you would be able to actually uh, replace this and go with faster speed if you want. In fact, 2400 to me, I feel like I'd rather go faster than that. So I would easily be able to do that. You can take this little cover off right here. See if you want to replace your NVMEs, that comes off. So this is not really touching anything. Oh, because that was over to this side. Wow, we could put another NVMe in here. There's three, look at this. So we've got our 970 Evo right there. This one appears to be a Corsair drive. And then we've got a spot for a third SSD right there. This is the first laptop I've personally taken a look at that allows for three NVMEs in there. We could expand this now to what? We could probably do three, four terabytes. We could have 12 terabytes of NVMe SSD in this drive or in this, this laptop. That's kind of crazy. I, this is the kind of stuff that makes me excited to see if you want to know the truth. Um, yeah, so that heat pipe system, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten heat pipes in this. That is just bananas. Yes, I said bananas. But I really don't want to have to, because to take this out, you can see here I have to take off the LED strip, which is right here. I would take off the, the ribbon cable. I would have to take off, obviously, these fans and stuff, and I really don't want to take a risk at damaging it. But if you take a look at what's in here, though, these fans, they have depth to them. That means it actually has a volume of air it can suck in. Whereas those really flat fans, they're real thin and they kind of scoop the air slightly with a slight angle. These are allowed to get a, a ton of air inside of them and then move them throughout the heat pipe system, throughout the heat sinks, which are here and here. That means you got plenty of airflow coming out, which is why the GPU obviously stays nice and cool. Yeah, but Jay, the CPU is getting to almost 100C. That's because it's a desktop C. Would you go with a cooler this small in your desktop? No, you wouldn't. But because the cooling efficiency of this heat pipe system is good enough to keep it under its 105C maximum, means that we were able to actually get a very tangible desktop-like performance with something this small. All right, so final thoughts on the Eon 17X. It is an absolute monster of a system. It should be. It's 560 watts of wall power for a desktop 11900K that uh, is giving you just under actual desktop performance. Remember, limited cooling is what's limiting us from going anywhere like matching desktop performance, even though it is a socketed, like if, you, if I were to take this apart and pull the chip out, it would look exactly like a desktop CPU because it is. People are gonna say 98C is far too hot. For a desktop, I would agree with you. But in this particular form factor, I think that that is, it, it's amazing what it's able to do because it never went above that. That's still seven degrees Celsius of headroom for where the chip is rated. And it's controlling itself through thermal. Uh, or through frequency, obviously, where 4445 all core is just absolutely mind blowing that we're getting that in a laptop. The RTX 3080 uh, laptop GPU, not new, performs exactly where we knew it was going to. I even predicted it was gonna land between the 3060 Ti and the 3070, which we've seen in the past, and that's exactly where it landed. The 300 hertz IPS 1080p panel gives you ultra smooth gaming, as you saw with uh, with squadrons, 300 FPS the entire time in the battle scene because we were locked at, at that. If we had turned that off, it would have gone way above it and it probably still wouldn't have given us any sort of screen tearing. G-Sync panel in here, which because it's a G-Sync panel is why we don't have an iGPU enabled for the CPU because of the fact that the monitor and the G-Sync panel is connected directly to the, the graphics card, the discrete graphics card, which means it's not able to switch back and forth between iGPU, so that's why that's disabled. Um, battery life on this, it, it's about as good as the gas mileage you would expect out of a, a performance built sports car. You don't, you don't buy a, a high horsepower car for the fuel economy, just like you wouldn't buy this for the battery life. Uh, travel friendliness, it's heavy. It is really heavy. Uh, and, and that doesn't even include the weight of the bricks. If you were to take the weight of the laptop and the weight of the bricks 
I mean, I'm guessing 15 pounds or more. It's absolutely insane. But that still beats lugging around your desktop if you need that level of performance. Guys, check out the Eon uh, 17X. It is configurable with different specs in terms of memory, CPU, GPU, and storage, and panel type. And you guys can find all that stuff down in the link below. Thanks again for Origin, uh, to Origin for sending us this PC to take a look at. It absolutely would work perfect for a mobile rendering computer for like trade shows and stuff like we were doing. The, uh, the, the traveling professional that needs this much horsepower but also wants to game. It, it, it's literally a one-stop stopgap system that can replace your desktop on the go, which is exactly what it's meant to do. If you're worried about the weight and you're worried about the size, then you would want to take a look at some of the other slim and ultra slim models that Origin has. Obviously, this is at the top of the echelon and they scale down from there in terms of not only performance, but also size. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. Check out the link down below to learn more. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.